after this i will be calculating sf i'll say that this would be since i have point b here first i'll take the section just to the left of b to the left of b so if i see this is my section and to the left i have two forces one is ra upward other is 20 which is downward so ra is positive 20 will be negative so i have sf at point b is equal to Twenty one minus twenty that is equal to plus one kilo newton. Next, I will take the section just to the right of B so that I even have this thirty sine thirty. So at point B, the value of shear force will be R A twenty one minus twenty minus thirty sine thirty. So here we have again SF at point B, we are having two values SF at point B is equal to 21 minus 20 minus 30 sine 30 degree. So my answer will be minus 14 kilo newton, one fourth. After this, I will calculate SF at point C. For that, I will be taking the section at point C. The section if I take, then it will be, the value will be RA minus 20 minus 30 sine 30 and this force is upward so it would be positive plus 24 so if i take the section then it would be here just to the right of c and it will be 21 minus 20 minus 30 sine 30 plus 24 so this comes out to be plus 10 kilo newton the value of shear force at point c then after this i am left with just point d point d as we can see between c to d there is no load so the value of sf which is at point c the same will be the value at point d only thing is here now my section will be just to the left of D and if I take such a section to the right I have downward force so it should be taken negative. So here I have SF at point D is minus 10. It would be positive because I have taken the section and the force is to the right of the section is downward. So plus 10 kilo newton. Now these are my SF calculations that is shear force. After getting all shear force values at the points, now we can easily draw the shear force diagram. So I can say that for drawing the SF diagram, I will be drawing the beam again which is given in the problem. That same beam I would be drawing here. It was hinged at one end. Then there was uniformly distributed load for 2 meter length. After that, we were having an inclined force whose components we have calculated. This was 30 cos 30 and the vertical component 30 sin 30. Then it was roller supported at point C and 10 kilo Newton force is at the free end. So here I have the points A, point B, 
C and D distances are two meter, then three meter, and again two meter. Now this is the beam which is provided in the problem. Here I would be extending all the points or projecting them downward. For drawing shear force diagram, the length of shear force diagram will be equal to the length of the beam. SF at point A, the answer is 21 kilo Newton positive. So I have to plot it above. At point B, I am getting two values. The first is positive one. It means shear force reduces from 21 to one kilo Newton. Next, again at point B, SF is minus 14. It goes into negative side. I'll write here minus 14 kilo Newton. Next, between B to C, we don't have any load. So this minus 14 will continue. Again, it would be minus 14. Next, SF at point C is plus 10 kilo Newton. So from minus 14, it will increase up to 10 kilo Newton. And this 10 kilo Newton will remain constant from C to D because we don't have any force between C to D. So these are the forces which I have marked. Now in order to join them, for point A, from point A to 21 kilo Newton, it would be upward positive. As there is UDL between A to B, so from 21 to 1, it should be an inclined line. Here we have inclined line. Next from 1 to minus 14, you d the value of force, shear force decreases. Next, it remains constant from B to C. After that, it increases up to 10 kilo Newton at point C. Then as there is no load between C to D, SF remains constant.